Uh, good evening everybody, it's Paul Daniels here and I just thought I'd drop in a quick note about what we're doing with the Flex Board View lately because it's been about a week and I haven't sent any updates out so some people are wondering whether I've just vanished off the face of the earth but no, I've been working and coding. So one of the things that a lot of people are waiting on is the uh, fruity phone board views and one of the big problems I've got or encountered with these uh, board views, these are derived from the pads files, is that uh, they're notoriously lacking in information, which is uh, quite annoying, especially considering the number of parts and pins. I mean, if you look up here, we've got 939 networks, and we've got 6,582 pins out of almost 1,500 parts. So that's a lot of information to be putting into. Now, we do have the schematics, which is a good help, and but the trouble is manually transposing or transferring all that data into a board view file is a real major pain in the butt. So I've been doing a lot of coding to try and uh, improve this, not only just for these particular boards, but any future ones as well. So, well, yeah, it seems no matter what I click, I always send hit a ground pin, and that's what happens when you hit a ground pin. So as you can see here, like the part numbers are wrong. X1417, I don't know what that's supposed to be, but uh, well, I can find out in, in the PDF up the top. But I've been working on UO600, which of course is the CPU, and I thought I would um, just demonstrate what we're doing here. So let's see. To make this quick, uh, I'm trying to think, I've probably already done quite a lot of these. Let's see if I right click on AA31. Yeah, I've already done that one. Uh, uh, let's see, AK35. Okay, that's empty. So we right click on that and it loads up into here. And we right click again and you can see it loaded up the field name there. Now, what it also does, it doesn't really work with this particular complexity of part but it jumps to the next unknown field and then it tries to search for that field again so like AL2 is the pin name and it's picked up AL22, AL21 it will just show me all the ones on this particular page that match that works well for things like Tristars or Tigris or things like that you know parts that aren't overly large but uh, can all be fit on a single PDF that's okay um, it's more of a multi-mode type speed entry system that I'm working on here um, so the way I'm working with these particularly large parts is to work from the PDF primarily like looking for the pin code and making it come up in the list and then I can then select the network name and then it will load that up. So we go to the next page. There's plenty more here. Let's see. You guys, I'm pretty sure all these are, yeah, 1v2s are all done. So let's try AM30. Okay, so that's not loaded up. So we go right click, that's loaded, AN30, loaded, AT32, loaded, out here, loaded. And we can go back and check those. Look at just AM there, see that's it. come on. Yeah, I'll stretch it out as far as I can go. That's okay. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> the uh, board view software won't let me decrease the size of this section here beyond a certain proportion. So that's what's going on. Uh, for doing this sort of video, I really need to have an ultra wide display, but we'll work with what we've got here. So where are we? 8231. Okay, that's not loaded. There. AR31. So it only makes it a lot faster than manually typing this stuff in. It's still a bit of a slow process, but it could certainly be worse. I can't really extend the algorithms to go through and try and associate between the pin number and the network number. It's just pushing it a little bit too far. Unfortunately, PDF files do not have any sort of hierarchical information in them it's basically all pdfs are uh, text with location and that's pretty much it uh, let's see if... 
We've got plenty more here. Yeah, it's never ending. Oh, so it's PP fixed. I'm pretty sure I've done the PP fixed ones. No, I have not. Okay. There we are. That's a bunch of them done. A14, 1v8. Yeah, I've already done those ones. G31. And these ones are coming up because I've already done them elsewhere. So, let's see. Like, I'm telling you, I always hit the ground pad. Uh, arc driver. That's all been done. Tri-star, of course. Let's bring up the Tri-star. There we go. So, yeah, so that's what I've been working on the last week or so instead of doing other things. I uh, need to get back and sort out the multi-platform releases. We do have the Linux release out, but the Mac OS one is taking me a little bit longer. I think I'm going to have to forgo releasing it as a uh, DMG package and simply put it out as a zip file for now until such time that I work out all the subtleties of the DMG that I need to get worked out. So I'm going to leave you with that. That's um, this is the edit mode of board view, uh, flex board view. It is not something that I'm ready to quite put out. You're probably noticing it highlights segments and things like that. That is so that I can delete them or move them to other layers. I'll demonstrate what's going on with that. Let's see if I can find one. Are you going to come up here? All right, yeah. So like these here. They're on different layers to the outline, and I can let's see, turn off those. So they're on the overlay layer. You can strip the board right down. So I've got the outline, the pins, the parts. The overlay is, if you zoom into here, you can see it's just a bit of information that was in the um, PCB files that I found. And it's basically a sort of a connectivity traces indication. So like we're looking here. If we click on one of these pins, you'll see they all light up, so they're all connected. Um, it's not really that uh, important or relevant in the board view but I left it there anyway for the sake of just simply putting whatever data I could in there. Alright, I'm going to leave it at that and I'll catch up with you all later.